Okay, let's continue. It's our great pleasure to welcome uh, Professor uh, Roshan Uri from Caltech at IPMU. And he's going to lecture for us on the recent advances in the Swanton program and constraints on photography. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. So, uh, no, thank you for the invitation. So, so for the next uh, four lectures, uh, I would like to discuss uh, what uh, we know and uh, uh, what has been discussed about uh, various constraints of consistency of quantum gravity to uh, the uh, low energy effective theory. Uh, and uh, uh, so there is a standard paradigm uh, in the uh, notion of low energy effective theory that says that basically you can write down uh, any uh, consistent uh, uh, low energy Lagrangian uh, in derivative expansion. By consistency means, for example, that it's free of anomaly and satisfies unitarity, et cetera. Then such theory uh, can always have some UV completion. And so this is sort of a standard paradigm of uh, low energy effective theory. And so that's why sort of we can write down any low energy Lagrangian and then uh, uh, work within it. And uh, you don't have to worry about whether, uh, what's going to be happening in the deep ultraviolet. So that's sort of a consequence of separation of scale. So uh, one of the uh, uh, points of my lecture is question whether this uh, standard paradigm uh, uh, works uh, in the case with gravity. So in uh, uh, particle physics literature, there is uh, this thing called the Hinchcliffe theorem that says that uh, when the title of, uh, is in the form of the question, then the answer is always no. And <laughs> so, so, so it should be obvious to, to you that since I ask this question, so the answer should be no. So, so the, the, that, that uh, uh, so the swamp land program is to sort of enumerate uh, example of why the answer to this question uh, is no. And uh, so, uh, so indeed, uh, uh, there have been some uh, uh, condition for uh, low energy effective theory that has to be satisfied uh, in order to, for it to have uh, a consistent UV completion. So it was uh, uh, named as a swampland condition by Kumran Buffer in 2005. I think that the name swampland came from the uh, so his notion that well, there, is a, there is a place, there is a real estate which looks like you can build a house on it, but then if you try to do it, then it turns out it's not buildable. And so, so this is a kind of uh, a notion. I think that idea that uh, 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 there are a con such non-trivial condition for uh, 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 a quantum theory of gravity existed a long time ago that people speculated. I, I don't know what the earliest literature on this, but suddenly uh, in by the mid 80s, uh, people said uh, there have been some, some papers. One of the first paper in the context of a string series by uh, Dixon, uh, Banks and Dixon, in which uh, uh, they showed that in the context of a string theory, uh, uh, all symmetry on the wall sheet are actually gauge symmetry, so no global symmetry. I think in the black hole literature, maybe there are some earlier, maybe Raphael knows. It was definitely before. Uh, yeah, so I think there are like late 70s, there are already some. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know that. The, I, I have, I'm trying to find the, the earliest literature on this, but uh, maybe Weira said something like that. I... So anyway, so so this 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 is sort of all this known uh, notion uh, of uh, 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 swampland condition. And then since then, there have been so, some uh, uh, additional condition being proposed. A year after Kumran came up with this general scheme of uh, uh, swampland condition, the couple of conditions were proposed. One is called weak gravity condition, and the other is called the distance condi uh, condition, uh, both of which uh, I will discuss later in this lecture. And then there have been some uh, further strengthening of, of these conditions, which led to more sort of uh, uh, stronger constraint. Uh, I'm afraid I earned, Kumran and I earned some notoriety by suggesting that uh, some strengthening of this these two questions about whether uh, digital space exists in string theory or not. And uh, so, uh, 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 so as, you, as you can see, uh, as you go in this, uh, the vertical scale in this diagram is whether it's rigorous or speculative. And the horizontal scale is whether the, the notion is useful, useful or useless. And uh, uh, the, gro the absence of global symmetry is the most rigorous of these swamp land conditions. Well, in fact, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, describe uh, 
the work that uh, I published with uh, Daniel Harrow last year, uh, in which we proved this statement uh, in the context of ADS CFT. And, uh, uh, but this is, so in that, in that sense, this is the most rigorous of this condition, but this is, in some sense, most useless of the swamp land condition, because uh, it doesn't tell us uh, when and how uh, the, the, the global symmetry is broken. So, so there cannot be global symmetry. So that means that what's seemingly like global symmetry in low energy is either explicitly broken or, in fact, uh, gauge symmetry in disguise. And, uh, but it doesn't tell us uh, when and how uh, this, this can happen. And uh, so if we, it, we, we can tell, the, uh, we, can, it is, it is, we know that it will be more useful, but uh, and, uh, distance conjecture, for example, can be more useful. Uh, it tells you ex explicitly what kind of terms are allowed uh, in low energy effective theory. And in fact, uh, uh, the weak gravity condition and distance conditions are sort of refinement of the absence of global symmetry uh, for the reason that uh, I will explain. Uh, 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 later in the lecture. Uh, and but those conditions are not proven. Uh, although I think that there have been sort of large literature by now, after 12 years, uh, on uh, uh, checking various aspects of these conditions. And uh, I think that some form of these conditions can be true. And uh, there are some ideas of how to go about proving it in certain cases. And, uh, and then there are some more speculative conditions that uh, I will come to, uh, toward the end of this lecture. Uh, since this is, a con this is not a conference, but school, so, so I thought that uh, my lecture should be prepared in such a way that it's more pedagogical and also educational. So, so I'll spend more time uh, discussing things that we can establish more rigorously. And uh, uh, it, uh, one, one of the reasons for that is that you know, in the process of establishing these conditions, uh, Will, will, it will require us to actually cover some of the techniques on the holography and the idea of symmetry in quantum field theory and gravity, et cetera, which can be useful uh, uh, for students beyond this type of questions. So, so I'd like to take this opportunity to sort of review some of the ideas in holography and symmetry in quantum field theory, et cetera. Uh, so I say that... Uh, 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 Seemingly consistent uh, uh, low energy effective theory can be inconsistent uh, uh, in the context of gravity. But of course, we need to be careful uh, in uh, formulating what we mean by that. So for example, there, there was a very interesting paper by uh, Nima Arukani Hamed and the co collaborator. Or maybe I should first write the word swamp plant somewhere. In fact, I think Kumran well, Kumran is sort of, uh, sort of more from the uh, a drier area of this, uh, this planet, and so for him, probably Swampland is a natural name. I'm from the monsoon area of this planet, so, so Swampland is actually a more comfortable place for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anyway, so, uh, so there is a paper by uh, uh, Arukani Hamed and the collaborators. Uh, can you read this, or should I write bigger? How big should I write? Is this big enough, or can you read? What is the last character? What is the last number? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, for example, in, in this paper, they point out uh, a high, rather non-trivial constraint uh, on low energy effective theory that is beyond the sort of standard condition on uh, 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 absence of anomaly, etc. So they, they discuss, for example, suppose you have a, a scalar field theory coupled to gravity, for example. Uh, you can write down some renormalizable theory out of this, and then, but you can add higher derivative term. And they pointed out that there are actually highly non-trivial constraints on the coefficient of these higher derivative terms, that unitarity and absence of superluminal propagation put condition on, on these co coefficients. So, so there are such conditions that are not uh, sort of obvious, but still there. Uh, I think that uh, to my understanding that there are some similarity of these conditions to 
distance and weak gravity conjecture, and there is some literature on this, but they are not quite the same. They are not quite the same. So, so you cannot, for example, so far, uh, uh, have not been able to derive, for example, weak gravity conditions uh, from these conditions. I will mention the, some of the attempt to do that later, but uh, it's not quite the uh, equivalent. So, uh, so, so we will discuss some of those things later. Okay? And, uh, uh, okay, so, so let me first begin uh, with uh, the question of whether uh, a quantum theory of gravity can have global symmetry or not. Oh, by the way, uh, you can always ask questions. Uh, during the lecture, I prefer to take more technical questions, and we can discuss philosophical questions during the question and answer session in the afternoon. But if you are compared to ask philosophical questions, you are also welcome. So I can ask whether there is any question at this time. OK? Uh, so if not, uh, uh, let me move on. So, uh, so, so the, the, the global symmetry. So I, I, I first uh, would like to uh, sort of clarify what we, I mean by these conditions. So no global symmetry. in quantum gravity. So for example, uh, if you write down the standard model of particle physics, the standard model has a baryon number conservation and the lepton number conservation. So there are no uh, gauge fields associated to that. These are uh, global symmetry of the standard model. Uh, in fact, uh, if you consider, take into account the non-perturbative effect, then these, these uh, condition, these, these quantity can be violated. There are spherons and other effects that violate this condition. But the difference of baryon and minus lepton uh, is exactly con conserved in the context of standard modeling. In fact, uh, 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 in fact uh, uh, if you consider uh, particle content of standard model of particle physics and the gauge symmetry, et cetera, then you cannot write down a, a renormalizable term that violate uh, B minus L symmetry. So, so these are called accidental symmetry. So these are, these are uh, global symmetries, but the uh, so sort of particle content and the interaction gauge, sim uh, gauge symmetry Compares us to uh, compare that uh, 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 compare these global symmetries, but as soon as you add the non uh, non uh, higher derivative term, then you can always write symmetries that violate it. For example, you can you can you can violate this symmetry by dimension five and six terms. So you can add these terms to to violate these symmetries. And in fact, uh, uh, it is expected that. Uh, uh, a standard model is embedded in uh, a, a, a unified theory, such as grand unified theory, et cetera, then inevitably such a term would be generated and B minus L symmetry should be violated. And that's why, uh, for example, Japan is planning to build hyper Kamiokande starting next year to uh, extend the reach uh, of uh, test of the proton number uh, uh, violation. Uh, so they, to, to, to see whether proton number can be violated or not. And uh, so it's very exciting. It'd be more exciting if we can tell experimenter how big the effect is. Uh, so, so that's sort of why it's not very useful condition, because we cannot tell how, how big the effect is. Uh, and uh, uh, it'd be very interesting uh, if we can generalize this uh, condition to that effect. Uh, So, so the, in, the, in this context, the, the condition that there are no global symmetry is that low energy effective theory may have accidental symmetry like this, but this symmetry cannot be made to full symmetry of quantum theory of gravity. So that's a condition. And uh, so the, there is another possibility that uh, uh, the, the, this, this statement can be true. So for example, uh, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so for example, the, uh, the, the, the uh, global symmetry may be gauge symmetry in disguise. 
So for example, the famous example is that suppose you have a, a string theory, and then, then suppose uh, you have a compact space uh, which has some isometry. So compactification with isometry. So clearly, uh, the low energy theory has some kind of symmetry that you inherit from having the fact that the compactized space has some, some symmetry. But these are actually uh, 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 gauge symmetry rather than global symmetry, because uh, uh, these are basically inherited from diffeomorphism symmetry in higher dimension. So diffeomorphism symmetry is a global uh, gauge symmetry, so these are, uh, 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 these are gauge symmetry. But if I take the limit when the Planck mass goes to infinity, uh, this isometry becomes global symmetry. So therefore, this is sort of a nice example where the, the gauge symmetry becomes global symmetry in the limit when the, uh, uh, the gravity is turned off. Or stated in another way, that in low energy effective theory, when you, turn, when you ignore the gravitational effect, low energy effective theory has a global symmetry. But as when you try to turn on the gravity by keeping in Planck finite, then it's upgraded to gauge symmetry. So this is another way that uh, uh, the global symmetry is absent uh, in, in the full quantum theory gravity. OK, so, so why, uh, so, so these are examples. So, so why uh, uh, some uh, people believe something like that to be true? So here is a standard argument. Uh, of why uh, uh, something like that uh, is true. So suppose you have uh, a low energy effective theory, low energy effective theory uh, with uh, SU2 global symmetry. When you have global symmetry, then any state in the theory should be classified into representation, unitary representation of SU2. So that means that it must have spin J and the dimension of the representation is 2j plus 1. So in the case of SU2, you can have uh, j to be arbitrarily large. So, and then in order for, yes, you have a question. No, now you have too small. Oh, is this too small? Should I write bigger? OK, thank you for pointing it out. Yeah, OK. Uh, in fact, uh, it could be helpful. Uh, I'm short, so it would be helpful to have lectern or something like that, so I can, I can reach to the top. But anyway. So, uh, OK, good. So, uh, so, suppose you, so, so, so in order for this, to, uh, to, for this symmetry to make sense, you have to have at least some particle which carries non-trivial SU2 charge. If there is no particle uh, with charge, then it's useless no, uh, statement to say that this theory has SU2 symmetry. So suppose you have some particle with spin J. And then combine these particles together uh, to make black hole. And uh, by adjusting the incoming particle to make black hole, you can make uh, a black hole of pretty large representation. So you have a black hole of spin j, uh, where j is very large. Now, uh, black hole, so, but this, this is not, this is a Schwarzschild black hole. This is not Reichner Norton black hole. <laughs> because this is a global symmetry. This, is, this black hole is charged with respect to global symmetry rather than gauge symmetry. There are no gauge fields that sort of uh, mediate this charge. So you have a Schwarzschild solution. And then this solution can Hawking radiate. So you have a mass and charge. So the mass can go down. The charge stays the same. The charge stays the same because there are no gauge fields to mediate the, the charge uh, interaction. So if this was a, a, a gauge symmetry, then there is a Maxwell field or gauge field associated to it. So, so for example, the Hawking radiation may distinguish positively charged particle and negatively charged particle. So for example, this, if this is positively charged, positively, positive uh, uh, Hawking quantum might be preferred, preferably ex, uh, emitted rather than negatively charged particle. So the charge may not be conserved for black hole during the process. But for global symmetry, we expect it to be, oh, you can take this away. You can, you can throw it on the ground. That's my, that's my bag, so. Uh, so, uh, so that means that, uh, so, so th this can be a problem. 
this can be a problem because if the mass becomes large, uh, the area of the horizon becomes small. So that means that uh, the entropy of this black hole becomes small. Okay. So then you may get into the situation where, j if, if you initially, if j is very large, then 2j plus 1 representation may not fit into the Hilbert space of black hole that is given by the uh, uh, Bekenstein Hawking entropy. So dimension of the black hole is given by exponential of Bekenstein Hawking formula. So, so, so you, you, may, you, may, you may get into problem if this is less than 2j plus 1. Well, in order to make do this, uh, j has to be very, very large, but theoretically you can imagine a situation that leads to con uh, uh, contradiction. So this is sort of a, a fairly standard argument for why, uh, uh, in this particular case, SU2 symmetry uh, cannot be uh, 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 true. Now, you can, you can ask a question about this, this argument. Uh, is it, can you trust this argument? So, for example, are you sure that there are no subtle correlations between Hawking quanta? So I said that uh, symmetry, uh, the Hawking quanta precisely uh, conserved the, the SU2 symmetry, but is that true? There are also problems uh, that this is too restrictive. So, for example, this works for SU2, but how about U1? Well, in the case of U1, you may, also, you may still try to argue that you can have arbitrary large uh, 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 charges, and then that may, may lead to some kind of uh, uh, large number of remnant, and that may be uh, problematic, although the, the, the problem may be, the, 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 the argument may not be as strong as this one. But also, for example, you may have a problem with a discrete symmetry. So for example, what about uh, Z2 symmetry? Can you exclude Z2 symmetry using this argument? Well, Z2, Z2, Z2 symmetry has only two representation. One is trivial representation, and the other is one-dimensional representation where the non-trivial element is rep represented by minus one. So, but both of them are one-dimensional, so, so this, this argument doesn't... One-dimensional one space can fit in any space. So, so, so this, this argument does not work. Okay? So, uh, but... Uh, it'd be nice if the uh, uh, argument for... There is an argument that works for discrete symmetry. Or whether, you can ask whether discrete symmetry is allowed or not as a global symmetry. And uh, we will show that... Uh, in fact, it's not going to be allowed. So, so, so this argument is not strong enough, okay? And uh, uh, so, so I would like to show, describe the work that, I, as I said, uh, I did with uh, uh, Daniel Haro, uh, where we proved that the global symmetry of low energy theory cannot be made an exact symmetry of quantum gravity. Uh, and uh, 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 we proved it in the context of ADS-CFT. You have a question? Yeah. So you are, you, oh, well, let's, let's see. So, so initially, you may need large M and large J because you're going to be combining large number of particles in order to create black hole of large charge. But it can Hawking radiate, right? So, but it ra radiates mass but not charge. And you take J to be large enough so that uh, after you get into this inequality, you can still, uh, uh, the mass of black hole is still larger than the Planck mass so that you can trust the Bekenstein Hawking oh, formula. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so this, is, this is sort of my, my picture, that uh, so you start with large black hole, but it, you let it Hawking radiate. But Hawking radiation will not carry charges, yes? Just, just to be clear, though, this does rely on assumptions about how black hole evaporation works. And yeah, 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 so that's what I said. And I, I, love, I love this comment, because you are making point that uh, the, the proof is needed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. So, so, so. Yes. One more. Yeah.
Ah, yeah, so that's another possibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, so, so there are lots of, lots of things that you can complain about this argument, which is why uh, we, we, we wanted to prove this more rigorously. Okay? So we proved this in the context of ADA-CFT. We haven't proven it in the, for asymptotically flat space. Uh, it is possible that if I take the limit of uh, sort of small cosmological constant and large radius of ADS, that our result uh, can be used to make statement about gravity in asymptotically Minkowski space, but we have not made this point uh, uh, carefully enough, so this is something that uh, may need to be done. Okay? So, so this is what I want to do. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, so in order to proceed, uh, in fact, I need to define more precisely what we mean by symmetry, because uh, it turns out that uh, uh, we cannot uh, exclude uh, any uh, uh, arbitrary uh, uh, global sim uh, symmetry of uh, quantum gravity, uh, quantum field theory, but some particular type of uh, symmetry that respect the locality of quantum field theory. So, in uh, undergraduate uh, quantum mechanics, when you, uh, uh, you learn that symmetry is something, symmetry is, what, so what do we mean by symmetry? Well, symmetry is a unitary operator that commutes with Hamiltonian. Okay? So that's sort of one definition of symmetry, but that, may be, that seems to be too broad, and in fact, there are symmetry of this type that we cannot exclude. So for example, uh, suppose you have a discrete spectrum, and suppose you pick 27 uh, uh, state from the, from the spectrum, 27 is some arbitrary number, and then, then you, you can consider some phase rotation of just 27 state. That's a global symmetry, that, that's a symmetry, that commutes with the Hamiltonian. But we cannot exclude such uh, symmetry, uh, 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 in fact. And so, so we, need to, we need to be more sort of specific about what kind of symmetry that we would like to exclude. So here, is a con here are the conditions. So, so suppose you have a quantum field theory, and then suppose you have a time direction to quantum field theory, and then some spatial Cauchy slice, sigma. And we say that this has a global symmetry, G, uh, if the following conditions are the case. So first of all, you have a, a unitary uh, homomorphism from the group to the uh, space of unitary operator on the Hilbert space. So if you choose Cauchy surface, you can quantize the uh, uh, quantum field theory on that Cauchy surface and define the Hilbert space. And you have a, a, a space of unitary operator. And then, then the, the group for each group element, you have a unitary operator, and that's homomorphism. So I would, I'm, sa I'm saying that, the, yeah, you have a question already. Well, because it depends on what kind of Cauchy surface that you choose. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, uh, later, it's, it's useful to specify where you are doing sigma. So, so that's sort of notational purpose. And uh, uh, I said the homomorphism, and uh, I'm not... I'm not requiring it to be representation. So there is a fine difference between them, uh, which is that when you say representation, we require that uh, this unitary operator is continuous in the group. And uh, in fact, later, I would like to exclude the situation where the symmetry is spontaneously broken. We can actually exclude a case when global symmetry is spontaneously broken also, in which case, actually, uh, this, such operator exists, but such operator is not continuous function of the group. So, 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 so I, I'm, that's why I'm ex ex excluding this. So the second condition, which is, so, so if this is just this condition, then it's like what we usually learn in undergraduate quantum mechanics. But then we have to include the con notion of locality of quantum field theory. So, so what we do is the following. So suppose uh, S is a subspace of this Cauchy surface. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, we, we can sort of slightly uh, flatten, uh, flatten it, so you can allow the subspace of this uh, 
uh, entire space. So, so to be precise, so suppose we have this Cauchy, uh, Cauchy surface. We consider some subspace like S. And they are associated to this. We consider uh, uh, algebra of local operators. In the case of gauge theory, this has to be gauge invariant local operators. And uh, uh, so we require that uh, 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 there, is, there is a, so, uh, so let me, so suppose, let, let me back up a little bit. Suppose you have a, a subspace of this Cauchy surface, then you consider algebra of local operator. Then we require that uh, we have actually a map. So this is why I actually had introduced this notation, because you, I require that uh, there is actually a notion uh, restricted to this subspace, uh, which preserves this algebra of local operators. And the third condition is that u of g of s uh, is faithful for g. So what this means is that uh, for every element of g, uh, this operator is non-trivial. This just means that uh, when we say g, it is actually the full group that is acting non-trivially. For example, there is a SU2 versus SO3 group that you might be familiar with. And in, uh, 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 there is a distinction between when we say symmetry is SU2 or SO3. Right? So, so, so this is a reflection of this. And the third condition, fourth condition is that uh, this preserves energy momentum tensor. So, in addition to what we experience in undergrad uh, quantum mechanics, uh, I require these th three conditions uh, to make this as a sim genuine symmetry of uh, uh, quantum field theory. Now, uh, by the way, uh, so these definitions are what we call zero form symmetry now. So there is a modern uh, terminology called the P form symmetry. So, so, so this is, this is about uh, what is called zero-form symmetry, which is acting on the operator localized at a point in the space-time. Uh, there, uh, uh, there is a generalization of this symmetry called P-form symmetry. Which acts non-trivially on extended object rather than point-like object. And, uh, uh, we can extend everything that I'm going to tell you uh, about uh, for P-form symmetry in general, but it requires a little bit of uh, sort of modification uh, of this uh, definition. And in view of time, I'm not going to get into that. Okay, so just so that we understand what these uh, definitions are, and so that also just to show that these are not empty exercises, so let me ask you some questions. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you some example of symmetry and ask you whether these are global symmetry in this sense or not. So, so suppose you have a phi to the fourth theory. And the phi is real. Okay, so this theory has a symmetry where you change the sign of phi. Is this a global symmetry or not? In this sense. Well, it is a global symmetry, so, so it, it was not a trick question. <laughs> so this is, a, <laughs> this is a global symmetry. Uh, you can, so the thing is that you can actually find, you can define such operator, which actually generate this. And the, such operator can be written only locally in terms of phi. So, so this satisfies this condition. So, so here is a, a, a little bit non-trivial non -trivial question. So suppose you have QED. 
QED has gauge symmetry, so QED is not, uh, gauge symmetry is not a global symmetry. But uh, suppose you have a, a, a charged fermion. Well, you can, you can of course, uh, uh, do gauge transformation of fermion. Now, but there is a non-normalizable gauge transformation. You can, you can you, for example, electron has a charge, and this charge is conserved, right? So, so these, are, these are thought of as a uh, sort of non-normalizable gauge transformation where lambda is constant. So if you have QCD coupled to fermion, lambda being constant is a symmetry of the Lagrangian, okay? Is this global symmetry or gauge symmetry? Where electron ch electric charge is conserved, is this global symmetry or gauge symmetry? Who thinks that this is global? Somebody said global symmetry. Who, th who thinks this is a global symmetry? Good. Okay, so the question is, can you construct this? And in fact, the answer is no. So, 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 you, so even, though, even though this is often considered as global symmetry, but this is not global symmetry in this sense because you cannot construct this operator. Okay, uh, another kind of example. So suppose you have SUN pure Yang Mills theory. So SUN pure Yang Mills theory has a center symmetry, right? Center is, is an element of SUN which commutes with ele every element of SUN. So SUN has a ZN center symmetry. Okay, so ZN acts trivially on the uh, 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 the, 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 uh, so this is, this is a symmetry of uh, 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 pure yang mirror theory. Now, is this global symmetry? Yes. yes. OK. There was a yes. It is a global symmetry, but it is not a zero-form global symmetry. So it is sort of a tentative no. Uh, it, it, there is no local operator for which ZN, so the third, condi the third condition is that it has to act faithfully. The so that, that there must be a local operator for which ZN acts non-trivially. You can show that there are no operators. In this case, actually, the operator of which, for which ZN acts non-trivially is a line operator. So, so, so in the modern literature, it's called one-form symmetry. So, uh, uh, so this is sort of an example where it is a global symmetry, but not in that sense that it is, a, yeah. Are you, are you therefore excluding symmetries such as Sankara Sorry? Yeah, so here I'm, I'm, I'm so, so the, 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 this, is, this is the kind of things I was going to come to later, but here I'm only considering in, internal global symmetry, so commute with the energy momentum tensor. Yes? I, it, it, it's a global, it, it's a non-normalizable part of global symmetry. I have not defined other symmetries. Okay, yeah. so, so you can, you can, you, so, 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 I, so therefore I cannot answer your question. Well, but it is, I can tell you that this is not a global symmetry in the sense that I have defined. And conventionally it's not a gauge symmetry, so there must be a third There must be, yes, yes. And in fact, uh, yeah, maybe I, I'll come to that later probably, yeah. It acts non-trivially on the Hilbert space, but not in the way that I defined. <coughs> Sorry? So, so this one is a counter condition. Can, this violates this one. This one violates this condition. Sorry? So, uh, so here I defined S to be subspace of the, uh, 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 so this is co-dimension two in this case. Uh, co-dimension one in this case, yes. Yeah. In space time. Okay, so one more, uh, so some more example. So, so suppose you have conformal field theory in two dimension and suppose it has a Katsumudi algebra. So you have a, a, a generator Jn, n is an integer. Is this global symmetry? So it is, it is global symmetry for J0, but uh, not for Jn, where n is not equal to zero. 
because uh, when n is not equal to zero, it doesn't commute with the energy momentum tensor. So. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so, 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 I have more example, but I'm running out of time, so maybe I should stop. Yes, you have a question. What, what group, uh, what you there? Yeah. So suppose you have a, 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 a two-dimensional conformal field theory, and suppose it has the affine D algebra. The Katsumodi Lie algebra. So, uh, so for example, uh, SU2 versus Mino with the model, for example. Then you have a current parameterized by integer n, right? So the charges are parameterized by integer n. My question was that are these global symmetry in the sense that? Uh, so I, I was giving uh, e example which violate every one of these conditions. Yes. Yeah. So QED example violates the second condition. You cannot find this operator. Okay, so, so, so I, I, I presented this example to demonstrate that every one of these conditions are interesting. Okay, so, yes? Um, so you, you, uh, so in the QED case, uh, there's still a kind of uh, electric charge. Yes, yes, so, 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 yeah, so that's the point. So it's, the, the electric charge is conserved, but still you cannot write this operator. So, Yeah, yeah, so for example, in the case of ADS-CFT correspondence, there is a non-normalizable part of the gauge symmetry in the bulk, which is allowed, right? So for example, you can have conformal field theory with global symmetry. These are gauge symmetry in the bulk, which is non-normalizable, exactly of this type. So I gave this example to show that we are not excluding these. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there, is a, there is a line, there is a dressing. Well, in a modern language, there is a gauge dressing. Exactly. So if you want to write down local operators, those conversely are not drawn. So, so, so there is no local operator. These are not local. These are, not, these are extended operators. Q equals zero local operators. You can write down you know, things with zero charge. Yeah, but that's a violate of uh, 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 third condition. Okay, <laughs> so that, that, this is the true statement. QED, the non-normalizable symmetry, uh, 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 a non-normalizable gauge symmetry, QED, violated these conditions. Yes? For QED, can you make it explicit? Which AS is not preserved and which U you have? Sorry, sorry? You violate B. You, I violated this condition B. Which, which nine? A of S. A. The local operator, which is a local operator, is not preserved. Yeah, so, so, so what I mean is that, uh, so suppose you have a Cauchy surface. You cannot, you cannot write down, you can try to write down operator, and you, you find that it, you cannot do it. Because, uh, because this, is a, this is exactly because this is a global notion. Right? So because if you, if you pay attention to this local region, you cannot distinguish, so for example, okay, so here is, here is, a, here is a reason, okay? So you clearly uh, agree that if lambda were not constant, but only vary locally, so for example, if, 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 we, if you have a Cauchy surface, and if only vary some locally and it's zero everywhere, then you don't call it as global symmetry, right? These are gauge symmetry. But if you consider unitary operator that is defined only for the sub, sub, subset, this operator cannot distinguish between this and the constant lambda, right? So, so, so there is no way that uh, uni local unitary, op operate, uh, uh, unitary operator acting locally can distinguish non-normalizable gauge symmetry and the normalizable gauge symmetry because non-normalizability is inherently global notion. That's why. So therefore, this is sort of more or less proof that you cannot find such unitary operator. Okay? I can try to be more precise, but yeah. Sorry, just one more question. Yes. Uh, so for, for QED, one can also think of the charge object as being Wilson lines, right? So in that case, I can think of the QED symmetry as being a one-point symmetry. Um, is there a notion of 
No, I, I think it's still different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in the case of one-form symmetry, uh, the, the, I haven't told you what the definition of one-form global symmetry is, but in the case of one-form symmet global symmetry, you still have this kind of local notion. It's just that object that is transforming non trivialities are extended objects. As far as you, you, have, you require this kind of local notion, then you cannot sort of identify the, 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 the non-normalizable gauge symmetry, because non-normalizability requires some sort of uh, 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 non-local operator rather than local operator. OK? Yes, please. Excuse me? What would be wrong if I forget about number B? Like uh, what is wrong if I forget number B? So for example, then, what is wrong is that I won't be able to prove my theorem. <laughs> That's very wrong. <laughs> and, uh, but the, 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 so, so the, the, the thing is that, uh, in fact, I think that it is true that uh, quantum gravity can allow global symmetry, which violate this condition. So for example, the example I mentioned, that you just rotate the 27th eigenstate of Hamiltonian by a phase, would satisfy at least A and C. I'm not sure about D. This is meant to be D, mirror image of D. And uh, so, so, so there you get, you, it's pos it is entirely possible you can come up with counterexample to the absence of global symmetry in quantum gravity if you remove this condition. I, can, I think I can come up with counterexample. So, so in order to have the theorem, this is actually needed. In fact, for example, the, I think this is an example, for example. This violates B, but doesn't violate other things. And this is allowed in quantum gravity. Standard model can be embed, embedded in, in quantum gravity, right? So, yeah. Yeah, you have a question. For, for condition B again, sorry. But um, so does it have to work for any S you pick in sigma, or? So it, it should act on, uh, it should work for any choice of uh, any, well, it, it has to be, it has to, well, I have to, I have to be more careful. In, it, it cannot be Hausdorff set or something, but uh, no. yeah. So any reasonable subspace, subset, subset of Cauchy surface, yes. OK? And any standard global symmetry works this way. I will show you an example. Okay, so here I can tell you immediately an example of this. So, so, yes. Subset. Subset of Cauchy surface. Subset. I should have said subset. Yes. Thank you. Relativists are more, more rigorous than. Uh, uh, quantum field series, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, so suppose uh, a G is continuous. So, so, so what I'm going to say apply to uh, a, a, a either discrete or continuous. But suppose G is uh, continuous, then uh, under certain circumstances, Neta theorem works. What, me, what I mean, we mean is that uh, this uh, uh, symmetry operator can be expressed as the exponential of uh, some current operator integrated uh, over sigma, where uh, J, A, is a neta current. And A sort of uh, 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 parameterized, uh, A is the index for the Lie algebra. So if you have a continuous group, there is a Lie algebra associated to it, and it's finite dimensional Lie algebra. And then for each one of the generator, you have a neta current. And then you can integrate the time component of the neta current over uh, the uh, Cauchy slice, and uh, uh, you can define neta charge, right? So this is a, a situation uh, uh, when you have continuous symmetry. But in this case, uh, you can define UG of S to be just an in, uh, ex exponential of integral 
of uh, the same nata charge, nata, nata, dens nata charge density over S. So if you have a subspace F, S, you can integrate it. Yes? Oh, so wh wh what, what do you think is implicit here? So, so you're demanding something about, um, about the, the, you know, the, the unitary um, homomorphism for the global operator. Um, and then there's a bunch of subspace operators which just have to satisfy certain conditions, but um, don't they have to somehow, uh, I mean, what captures the sense in which they perform that operation on the subspace that the global operator... Ah, okay, 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 okay so, so, so. So, 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 here, so here is my answer to your question. So it is actually, so, so, I'm, so this was sort of leading to that answer to that question. So you can see that uh, uh, if you have neta charge like this and the integrated exponential integral of neta current, then uh, for subspace that, so you, in, a, in a situation like that, I can construct B. Oh, by the way, so here is another answer to the, the question that bothers most of the people. Try to write down neta current for this one. OK, so, so you, you find that uh, you cannot write neta current for this one. Actually, neta current will not be physical. OK, so, so that's one, 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 one thing. But anyway, so, so, so here, uh, so, so in this case, what happens is this. So suppose you have a Cauchy surface. So suppose you have a Cauchy surface, and suppose you divide the Cauchy surface into segments. And then suppose you call this as S1, S2, S3, etc. Okay? And then each one of them, for each one of them, I can define SI to be exponential of integral of uh, 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 neta current integrated over that S1. So in this case, the whole thing is actually a product of uh, this G of, uh, 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 U of GS that I defined over there, taking product over them and reproduces this one, right? So this may be the kind of thing that you, you think would, that I was impressed. Is, is, is that your ultimate definition? That no, 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 no. Okay, so in fact, what I'm going to explain now is that with defi definition of global symmetry, with additional reasonable assumption, this is a theorem. You can prove this. So you don't need to I don't need to. So it's not implicit. It's not implicit. It's actually derivable. So you can, you, with that definition, you can derive this property with additional assumption about quantum field theory, which is usually true. And uh, uh, so, so this, so, 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 what actually I really wanted to get to is that uh, the symmetry generator, when the space is divided into segment, symmetry generator gets also divided. Okay. So this is true when you have a neta neta charge, neta current, and uh, that is the case for continuous. But suppose, for example, this is discrete. Symmetry, then neta theorem does not exist, and then this is not true, and then this is not true, but this is still true. And then I can prove it. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let me explain this, and then maybe that will be the good breaking point of the first. So the organizer asks, I, I give you like a few minutes break in case uh, you, need, uh, some, you need to do some business or something. So. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, so let me actually explain, the, explain this, and then, then, then we can take a break. Uh, OK, so, so this is actually uh, what is call, uh, called as a splitability. of quantum field theory. 
Okay? So, uh, so I'm going to define uh, uh, the splitability, a uh, split condition for quantum field theory. And, uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, the, 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 first of all, let me first quote the theorem. Uh, and it was shown by uh, Bookford. Uh, the pressure uh, longer uh, in 1986. So these are sort of one of the uh, very important results of uh, constructive, uh, sorry, algebraic uh, uh, quantum field theory uh, uh, people. And uh, uh, the statement is that uh, uh, the condition, the, 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 the statement that uh, this symmetry generator can be expressed in this way. And this is called the splitability. Of symmetry. For obvious reasons, that the symmetry generator can be split into product of subspace when sigma is a union of SI. Uh, holds when Q quantum field theory itself has split property. Okay, so I have, not, I have to explain what split property means. Yeah, you have a question. Right, so we would like to prove that there are no global symmetries in quantum gravity. Yes. But this is a definition of global symmetry in QT. Yes. So what is a global symmetry in quantum gravity? I will, do th I will introduce that. Uh, so, so that's next order of business. And uh, uh, so let's see. So what is my plan? So, so the plan after the break is, first of all, a very briefly review ADS-CFT correspondence, and then uh, discuss uh, the important notion of code subspace of quantum field theory as a preparation. And then uh, I'm going to introduce the notion of global symmetry in quantum gravity, which is actually different, slightly different from this notion. And then, uh, well, it requires some additional condition. OK? OK, so, so if the quantum field theory has split property, then the, any symmetry of the, that quantum field theory split. And uh, this, whether it is, uh, it is discrete symmetry or continuous symmetry. So, so, I have to, I have, so this is a theorem. And then I need to define what split property is. So please bear with me. But uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, technical. And, uh, but I will explain what it means uh, immediately. So let me uh, bear with me. Uh, please bear with me. So we say that quantum field theory defined on the time direction times the Cauchy surface has a split property. Uh, if uh, the following condition is true. So suppose you have an open subspace. S and S prime, both are sort of subspace of this Cauchy surface, in the following sense that you have S and the S prime is slightly bigger. So uh, closure of S contains interior of S prime. So suppose you have such a situation. So closure of S is inside of S prime. So then, clearly, the algebra of local operator of S is uh, included in the algebra of local operator of S prime because there, there are more local operators in between, right? So the split property means that there is actually, so this, both of these are some kind of von Neumann algebra. And the split property means that there is actually a nice von Neumann algebra between them. So the algebra of local operator for S prime is bigger than algebra of local operator for S, but there is some, some nice von Neumann algebra between them. And uh, 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 it has a property that it is a type one factor. Okay, so this is a technical term uh, in von Neumann algebra. So uh, let me explain what we mean by that. So, so be, this being type one factor means that it has two properties. One is that uh, n has no center, 
no non-trivial center. Namely, that the, the n has no element which commute with everything in it. And the second property is that uh, uh, this n has a minimal, minimum projection. What it means is that uh, if you have a projection operator, uh, uh, you, you can have a smallest projection operator in that kind. So, namely, so let me give you an example. Let me define what I mean by minimum projection. So, suppose you have a, a von Neumann algebra, and suppose you have p, which is a projection operator. Projection operator means that p squared is p. So, suppose p is a projection. We say that p is minimum. Uh, if the following is true, so suppose you have another projection operator which project p uh, pro project to smaller subspace, uh, uh, sm smaller uh, projection operator, then either q is trivial or q coincide with p. Namely, minimum projection operator, minimum projection is a projection operator which cannot be made smaller. In the standard finite dimensional uh, the uh, Hilbert space, then algebra uh, the op op operator acting on that Hilbert space always satisfies this property because you can always consider projection to one dimensional subspace. Yeah. But in the case of von Neumann algebra, this is uh, uh, often not the case. And in fact, uh, algebra of local operator in the region is not type one. So the existence of minimum projection seems to be intuitively clear, but, but because our intuition is based on the finite dimensional situation. So, so this is an important distinction to make. So here is a, so, 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 so this is, this is a, uh, so why this type one is important? Well, so type one is important for the following reason. So, so if n is a type one factor, uh, and then we are considering the, uh, all these algebras are realized on the Hilbert space H, right? So H is a Hilbert space that you obtain by quantizing this quantum field theory on sigma. Then, uh, if n is type one factor, what happens is that n can be uh, realized as algebra of local operator on some subspace of A times identity operator acting on the complement, where uh, H can be expressed as uh, A and uh, complement. And uh, the, the complement, commutant, of N can be written as uh, identity operator acting on the first factor and uh, acting non-trivially on the second factor. In fact, uh, uh, this is actually the origin of the name of factor. So namely that uh, uh, being type one factor means that uh, there is actually a natural uh, decomposition of Hilbert space into factors. So if you think about this, this is actually sort of a refinement or more precise rigorous version of what we normally think would be true in quantum field theory and also used extensively without uh, much remorse uh, in the holographic uh, description in the case of ADS-CFT and the Ryu Takayanagi formula, etc. So when people uh, give talk about Ryu Takayanagi, uh, involving Ryu Takayanagi formula, we, st we start saying that we are in quantum field theory, you have a Hilbert space, and suppose the, uh, the Cauchy slice of Hilbert space is uh, decomposed into product subspace here, A, and the complement, then the Hilbert space decomposed into product, like that. Okay? And, uh, but this is not true. So in fact, uh, uh, so for example, here, here you have S, algebra S, and then, then it's complement. It is not true 
that uh, 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 there is actually a Hilbert space for which S of A is realized. You have a question? For type one, this is actually a true statement. Yeah. For type one, that's yeah. So, oh, so you're just that. this I'm just I'm just telling you the definition of type one and its property. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So so when you have a type one, then uh, the Hilbert space split, and so this is actually more rigorous version of what we usually think is true in quantum field theory. In quantum field theory, naively. Well, we, we, based, uh, we use this kind of intuition based on lattice gauge theory, for example, lattice field theory, that if you divide a space, Cauchy surface, into segment, the Hilbert space becomes product of Hilbert space associated to each segment. And uh, this is actually not true, and I give you a counterexample to this, but if there is a, a, a type one factor in between this, and then uh, if the quantum field theory has this split property, then it's almost true. You have a question. Yeah. And in one case you claim that it's just not true in quantum field theory. And in the other you said it is true. Yeah, it is, it is not true in the sense that this S of A is realizing, well, so this is a different notation. I should have said S of S or something. So I should have said S of S or something. So, 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 so normally what uh, 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 we say when in the context of Ryu Takayanagi formula, et cetera, is that uh, we, have a, 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 we have Hilbert space associated to this region. And what we, we, we sort of we naively think is that it's an algebra of local operator for which the uh, uh, A of S is realized on this. Do you mean something like uh, HS cross HS bar? Yeah, so it's almost like that, except that uh, you want H to be the entire Hilbert space. So if you think of this as S, H, S prime bar, then you will miss local operator in between, right? That's what, that's what I was just saying. If you're in the getting of the product. Yeah, yeah. But what I wrote is a precise mathematical statement. I don't have to apologize for it. But, uh, uh, the, but, uh, but notation is problematic. That's why I wrote A. A is, this is actually, so the reason I chose to write it as A, even though the notation is confusing, is A is neither S or S prime. But this is spiritually what we, I mean. So, so the idea is that even though, in the rigorous sense, A of S is not realized on this fact, factor of the Hilbert space, if you fatten it a little bit in this sense, then it's split. So namely that you cannot have this kind of sharp cutoff, but if you sort of consider uh, fattening it a little bit, then, then you can actually realize the kind of thing that you think is normally true. Okay? Okay, so you are not totally satisfied yet, so I give you uh, some uh, uh, reason that why this is not always true. And uh, so there has been some literature uh, there have been several uh, literature on why this, this kind of decomposition that which we normally think is true in uh, uh, quantum field theory is hard in gauge theory. So, so here, is, here is a way that this, this fails in gauge theory. So let me explain. And then let me explain why this can be addressed. Okay, so let's consider a pure Maxwell theory. So, just uh, uh, F square. No charged particle. Just pure Maxwell theory. Minus quarter or something. Uh, 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 defined on Cauchy surface, sigma, which has S1 in it, and the time some uh, uh, so suppose you have a d-dimensional space-time where d minus one-dimensional space-time is like a torus. So there is S1 direction, and then there is a, 
some compact space, d minus two-dimensional compact space. So suppose you have, you have such space. So then this theory is not split. Does not split. So this is an instructive example. So let me, let me try to explain uh, why this, is, this, does not exp, uh, this does not split. So suppose uh, I choose S to be this region. So this is my S. And then suppose I choose uh, S prime to be slightly bigger. So this is my S prime. Okay, so, so you have a algebra of local operator on S, and then you have an algebra of local operator on slightly larger S prime. Okay, so then you, you can ask, well, is there, is there a type one factor in between? And I'm gonna show, show you that it does not, you cannot have it. And the reason for this is that, uh, uh, suppose I consider a flux operator integrated over this direction. So you can have a flux, electric flux, going through this cycle, okay? So this is given by integral of this electric field uh, over this cycle. Then, uh, without charged particle, this flux is conserved, okay? And clearly, if you choose to evaluate this inside of this S, then this is, uh, this, is a, this is the element of uh, 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 A of S or A of S prime, right? And uh, uh, this commute with every operator. This commute with every operator. And so therefore, uh, phi should be in the center of uh, N if there is n between A of S and A of S prime. But in fact, the phi is non-trivial operator. Because uh, suppose you consider, even though there is no charged particle, you can still consider Wilson line operator integrated over S1. Yes? Why is phi in the upper S prime? Yeah, because uh, uh, algebra, uh, algebra of A of S, or, so it actually belongs to both of them. Because, uh, because gauge field, so F mu nu is a gauge invariant local operator, right? So, 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 and then when we say algebra, we allow addition and product and things like that. So, so that means that uh, uh, phi should belong to A of S, right? But it commutes with every operator because it's conserved, so that means that you can actually move this outside and still it's the same operator, right? So obviously, it commutes with all the local operator here. So therefore, uh, phi is a center of this, uh, whatever the algebra that is between A of S and A of S prime, okay? But it's non-trivial, because it's a flux operator, so therefore, it has a non-trivial commutation relation with Wilson line going in a dual cycle, okay? So this is a kind of counter example. Counter, uh, counter example to the split property. So, so this quantum field theory does not split. So, so this is why sort of there are a lot of literature, large amount of literature, about uh, how you can actually de de divide the Hilbert space of lattice uh, the gauge theory to, to, to into this kind of things. You cannot, because, because uh, this quantum field theory is not split. But uh, this problem can be easily avoided if you have charged the particle in it, because if you have charged the particle in it, then, then this is not the center anymore, because it doesn't commute with the local operator which is charged, right? So that means that you can, whenever, uh, whenever uh, the quantum field theory is, does not split, you can always make it split by modifying UB slightly. So for example, you can have a charged operator which is very massive. Suppose you have a low energy effective theory, which does not have a split property for, this, for, this, for the reason like this, then you can add a particle whose mass is bigger than UV cutoff, and then that, that if you raise a UV cutoff, the theory becomes split. So uh, 
uh, so therefore, the, 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 this problem can be addressed by uh, uh, changing the UV behavior of the theory. So by the way, uh, this problem is related to the existence of one form symmetry because uh, uh, conservation of flux has to do with a one form symmetry. Okay, so uh, to just to recap, the quantum sphere theory is split if you have the type one factor in between. And in that case, uh, our naive notion that Hilbert space split into segment when the Cauchy surface is split into segment almost works. So, uh, and in that case, uh, the, the theorem by uh, Buchholz and the collaborator showed that uh, the, the unitary operator realizing the charge, uh, you're realizing the global symmetry also split. And for, in order to prove this, we need all these properties that I mentioned over there. Uh, and quant so by the way, so here, is a, here was a counterexample, but in fact, there is no known counterexample where, uh, so, so no known, so let me mention a couple of things. There is no known counterexample, counter, I cannot write, counter example uh, on when the uh, 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 Cauchy surface uh, is a Minkowski space. And uh, so for, for in this case, for example, the uh, counterexample exists because you have this kind of non-trivial compact subspace. And uh, uh, in fact, the pure Maxwell theory split on this case. There is no known uh, counterexample, uh, even gauge theory split in this case. And even if it doesn't split, as I said, you can make it split by modifying UV. And uh, uh, so that's sort of sufficient for the purpose of our proof. So I think it's a, uh, yeah, yeah, David, you have a question. Um, yeah, so in the case of a gauge theory and hard D minus one, so usually the problem with the tensor product factor is if you start with a lattice description, then you can't write down a factorization because of Gauss's law. Right. Can you uh, explain from a lattice point of view how this, um, splitability properties does hold in that case? So, so it does not, just like in the pure Maxwell theory. If you have pure gauge theory, it does not. But if you have, a, for example, charged particle, you can cut the, the flux line. So then it's split. So you can have an operator which allows you to cut the Hilbert space into pieces. But you said there's no counterexample on RD minus one. So Right. You're saying a, a lattice gauge theory on RD minus one is a counterexample? Yeah, so, so in that case, what happens is that, uh, uh, yeah, I think so, because uh, so in that case, uh, uh, this property is still true that you can, uh, 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 you, you cannot have a non trivial center even in that case, I think. We can, we can discuss, I'd be happy to discuss it, but uh, any other question? Okay, so let's take a break. How much? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, so the organizer says five minutes. So we'll meet like uh, 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 twelve thirty. That's okay. <laughs>